Welcome to the top 10 forgotten chess pieces of history. Chess has had a long evolution and the pieces that we are used to today did not just arrive fully formed as we know them. Many varied and exotic pieces have battled it out on chess boards all across time and space. This list is a list of my favourites, ordered from the weakest to the strongest as I see them. But before we start, have you ever wondered why the US is so bad at chess? I've been thinking about this carefully and I reckon it's because they have no kings, no queens, and they've already lost two towers. Let's begin. At number 10, the elephant, also known as the owl fill. It's a predecessor of our modern bishop and it's found in the earliest known forms of chess. I've covered a couple of 10th century games of Shatrange on this channel that feature it, so I'll put the links in the description for those if you want to have a look at them. Um, the piece in the picture on the left here is an elephant from the 11th century Charlemagne chess set uh, from France. It's actually made of ivory, which is uh, uh, quite fitting because it's an elephant. So let's take a look at how it moves. So it moves with a two square diagonal leap. And although the elephant looks and sounds really cool, um, yeah, I like the look of it. Big, chunky, <laughs> big, chunky guy. Looks a bit intimidating. It's actually very weak indeed. It's, um, it's like a bishop because it's locked to the same color diagonal squares. But because it's jumping one of them all the time, it's actually limited to an eighth of all the squares on the board, which makes it very weak indeed. So it would take a king and eight elephants to actually force a checkmate on a bear king, as long as each elephant covers a different eighth of the board. And this is impossible in Shatrange because you've only got two elephants. So yeah, so yeah, cool looking piece, uh, interesting history, but very weak. At number nine, the furs, or alternatively, the minister, or even the advisor. My chess software is rendering it as a kind of hat sitting next to the king in the place where you might expect to find a queen. The image on the left here is again from the 11th century Charlemagne chess set. And let's see how it moves. It moves one square diagonally at a time, like a very weak bishop, and it takes forever for it to get anywhere. But at least it can access more squares than the elephant. It's maybe worth half a night, and um, it stayed in medieval chess after uh, Shatrange for many years until it was eventually replaced by the modern queen. In fact, in Russian and Ukrainian, the word furs is still the current name for a queen, so it's got a very long history. Uh, a king and three furses can force checkmate on a bear king if not all three furses are on the same square color. And you can actually get more than one furs because in Shatrange, the pawns can only be can only be promoted to furzes, so that's something to bear in mind if you ever play this game. Let's move onwards. At number eight, it's the jester, or the schleich, or the wazir, or the fool, or the thief, or the smuggler, or the spy, or the troll. He's got a lot of different names, but first we need to address what's going on with this board. This is courier chess, and it's played on an 8x12 board, and it's a variant that dates from the 12th century and was popular for at least 600 years. There are various drawings, manuscripts, and paintings that show and describe it, so let's take a look at some of those. Here's a nice looking guy. Um, he's sitting in front of his courier chessboard, and he's obviously a fan of this channel because he's made a nice chess mess. Uh, we have a painting here, and it looks like this lady is winning. It looks like this guy is failing to uphold the patriarchy, and everybody is suitably disgusted. And this guy is doing a much better job, so yeah. Um, we have the rook, it's just a normal rook, a normal knight, and the elephant's making an appearance, but by this time it was called an archer, and it's probably not um, shown as the elephant anymore at this time, this is just my chess software doing its best. This is the courier, which moves like a modern bishop, and we'll get to this, this is the king, this is the furs, and next to the furs we have the jester. So let's take a look at how the jester moves. It moves one square forward or back or left or right at a time, a bit like a very weak rook. Um, it does take a while for it to get anywhere, but at least it can access all of the squares on the board, so it's a little bit stronger than the furs. Um, it's maybe worth about half a knight, um, and three jesters are able to checkmate a bear king. So very nice, that's the jester. So sticking with courier chess, we have the man, or the sage. He's this piece on the chessboard, and this drawing is from a 17th century guy who uh, drew some representations of the courier chess pieces. Here they all are. You can see the schleich, or the jester here. There's an archer, king and queen, or the furs, 
soldier or the pawn and so on very nice so how does the man move it moves like a combination of the furs and the jester or put more simply like a king so one square in any direction uh, unlike the king you can <laughs> capture the man and the game will just carry on as normal it's worth about as much as a knight but it gains strength when we get to the end game because it's basically another king that you, you, you can use to corner your opponent with. So yeah, the man, very nice. Uh, one more thing before we leave courier chess. These uh, wide boards are much better than the standard size chess boards if you need to have a bar fight. At number six, it's the lion and an enormous chess board. This is the Spanish 13th century variant called Grand Aestrex. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but that's what it looks like to me. And it features a whole bunch of animal-based pieces. There's, there's a normal rook, there's the lion, there's a unicorn, there's a zebra or giraffe. There's a bishop here, but it's, uh, it was actually the crocodile. It just moves like a normal bishop, and this is how my software renders it. There's a bird, and um, yeah, a veritable menagerie. Let's see how the lion moves. So it's a leaper and it leaps three squares horizontally or vertically, then optionally one to the side. So it can cover quite a lot of space very quickly. And it's allegedly quite a strong piece, although I've not been able to quantify that fully just yet. And um, just one more thing, I found a painting of the Grand Ace Drex, uh, so I'm not just making this up. I think the painter probably needs to work on his conception of perspective, but otherwise very nice. At number five, the centaur, first seen in Turkish great chess and called the vizier. It came to the west in 1617 with Carrera's chess, where it was called a centaur. It's continued to feature in many variants since then under different names, for example, the princess. And another example, the grandmaster Capablanca made his own chess variant called Capablanca chess, of course. And he named the piece the chancellor, but later changed his mind and called it an archbishop. Uh, we're talking about this piece here. This, this is a Capablanca chess board. And we're talking about this uh, piece on the left hand side here and since we're talking about Capablanca it's a good <laughs> good chance to show the picture of the cool dude himself here he is so how does this piece move let's see well the clues in the symbol here it's got the head of a horse so it can leap like a horse but it's got the bottom end of a bishop uh, so it can move in diagonal lines uh, like a bishop uh, in which case it doesn't jump over pieces it can only leap when it's moving like a knight so yeah, as you can see straight away, it's a very powerful piece covering a lot of squares. It's actually not quite as strong as a normal queen. It's about seven or eight pawns worth of material. And so yeah, nearly as strong as a queen, stronger than a rook. So very nice. That's the archbishop or the centaur. That's right, we're back on the Grand Aestrex board of the 13th century with all its crazy animals. Uh, we're looking at the Unicornio in fourth place. Uh, just a note, the um, medieval codex that we know this game from actually represented the unicorn as a rhinoceros, so uh, bear that in mind, and we'll see how it moves now. So this is a very cool piece with an unusual double pattern of movement. First it moves like a knight, and then it shoots off like a bishop as far as it wants to go. So let me just show you this. Well, you can see the first move first part of the movement like a knight and then shooting off like a bishop so it's able to cover an enormous amount of space very quickly indeed and obviously it's very strong but I haven't actually been able to quantify that as such it also goes backwards so you see the knight move and then the bishop move going backwards so um, I have actually played grand ace Drex against my computer and I can tell you that these things are terrifying they seem to come out of absolutely nowhere and from impossible angles and so a very frightening piece to play against but I'm sure that if you were to become used to their movement and competent with them they'd be a very good addition to your army. That's the Unicornio. At number three it's the Empress. I'm using Capablanca's 1920s chessboard variant to represent this piece again. Here it is and here it is the white version of it. It's a piece with a very long history and many different names. It was first seen in Turkish great chess where it was called the War Machine. Awesome, awesome, cool name. They should have kept that one. But it's also been called things like the Champion or the Chancellor or the Marshal. So let's see how it moves. So you probably already spotted it's got the head of a horse and the bottom of a rook. So it moves like a combined rook or knight. So um, straight lines uh, vertically or horizontally and it can leap if it moves in the style of a horse. So 
Um, it's probably worth about the same as a normal queen, although a normal queen is slightly stronger in the end game. And that's it, the Empress. Yes, we're back in crazy town with the Grand Ace Drex and the Anchor in second place. So uh, some people call this a griffin, but it's basically just a giant bird. Let's see how it moves. Well, its movement pattern does actually remind me of a bird, although I have, I've read somebody describe it as a kind of double-barreled rook. Let's move the kings out of the way so you can see. Well, it, it starts off by going diagonally one square, and then it shoots off horizontally or vertically as far as it likes. So obviously very strong. Um, and there you can see the full, <laughs> the full double barrels in all directions. So yeah, it sort of flies off like this, although it's not a leaper, which is a bit strange. This is a bird. It seems to be worth around 2 rooks, or maybe 10 to 11 pawns, so very strong indeed. However, it's not quite as strong as the last entry on the list. Let's see number 1. At number 1, the Amazon Warrior Woman. And I've got a standard chessboard here, and you can see in place of the standard queen, I've got the Amazon Warrior piece. It's normally represented as a horse with a queen's crown. And uh, the reason that I'm using a standard board is that during the Middle Ages, it was experimented with in order to replace the furs or the advisor in competition with what we now have as the queen. So let's see how it moves. So as you might expect, it has all the powers of a queen, so it can move straight lines as far as it likes, up, down, left or right or diagonally. But it also has the power of moving like a knight and jumping over pieces when it does so. Uh, so obviously you can see that it's an extremely strong piece. It controls an area of 5 by 5 squares around itself. In fact, it's so strong that it doesn't need any help in order to checkmate the opposing king. Uh, let's see that with the uh, black Amazon here. That's a check. It moves. That's a check. It moves. And that's a check. And that's mate ridiculously overpowered um, and as i mentioned before it was in competition with the standard queen uh, a few hundred years ago in order to replace the furs and um, eventually the modern queen won out because of the excessive power of this piece apparently it persisted in russia into the 18th century although some players disapproved of its ability to gallop like a horse so its massive power is actually the reason that it's seen in chess variants less often than the empress or the centaur and that's it. Well, thanks for joining me this time for the top 10 forgotten chess pieces, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>